Welcome back, everybody, to another Kicking Tables. My name is Sean Evans. And I'm Tico. And today we'd like to welcome the creator of Zoo Tiles Hime, Mr. Josh Bakken. Josh, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. How are you tonight? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So, Josh, Zoo Tiles is new to us. Uh, you are launching it in October. It's coming up very, very quickly. I know. Uh, what is Zoo Tiles Hime? Tell us about this game and like, how do you play it? Sure. So Zoo Tiles Hime is uh, what I call a strategic tile placement game. So if you're familiar with um, TCG games, mm. um, so like the Pokemon yep. TCG, and, and you know, if you're familiar with tabletop, you're probably pretty familiar with um, the TCG genre. Yes. This is kind of something that takes that, uh, takes elements of that and, all, and brings it into more of a, a board game, top-down uh, tabletop um, arena, if you will. It's kind of, the way I describe it is if you took um, a, t a, a traditional TCG game, a trading card game, and, and, and dominoes, and those two had a child, uh, that's kind of, in a really, you know, rough nutshell, what you would get with a game like Zoo Tiles Hime. So it's a very interesting combination of games there. <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing, the thing about it is, is that people really seem to like that combination. So um, as far as, instead of me having a hand of cards and my opponent having a hand of cards and then us playing them and just kind of conceptually seeing that things would happen, like my guy would attack your guy or whatever, um, what Zoo Tiles does is it kind of takes the action and puts it on the table. And so if I play a tile that would initiate an action, the tiles on the board actually move in relation to each other. So um, the game is loosely based on the creatures of the Chinese Zodiac. Okay. So a perfect example might be um, like I would have an action that would allow a ram, say I had a ram tile in the playing area, to push other tiles around, right? That's kind of what rams do, right? They right. kind of push things around. So that's a different play pattern than what you would typically get with a um, traditional TCG game. And people seem to really kind of enjoy it. So that's kind of why we're moving ahead and, and hoping for the best. What was the inspiration behind this game? Like that, you described it as, you know, tabletop uh, or trading card game meets dominoes. But so how did this idea come to you? And what was the what was the inspiration here? Well, there's a couple uh, couple things that led into it. I guess the first thing it was, was the foundation um, that was set by me being a, um, a trading card game player from way back in the day. So I started playing, um, you know, the real big popular one um, back in 1993, uh, right when it first came out. And it just blew my mind. Like I was, you know, um, as most kids, most boys, I guess, are um, kind of into um, baseball cards, you know, previously yep. to that. Yeah. But that but the fact that you could take a baseball card and give it power, right? And so me and my friend are agreeing that this new type of card, we're agreeing to a rule set where this thing actually has power. And that concept back in nineteen ninety three, yeah. absolutely Josh, nerds unite, man. Nerds unite. That's <laughs> I was I was there with you, man. Right? So you know what I'm saying? So that blew my mind, and so, um, but what else, What the other thing that blew my mind was the popularity of that genre um, spawned a million different people yes. trying to kind of jump in and ride the coattails on the leader at the time. And that made an impression in me because um, I, I didn't start designing zoo tiles um, around that time, but the impression that that era left on me was I did not ever want to be one of the also rands who are only in it to, for a cash grab to kind of ride on the coattails of this, um, you know, larger game. Right. I just, I, I'm not saying that anybody did anything wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying for me, it just felt like, you know, if, if someday I do something, it's not going to be as a reaction necessarily, or I, I'm not going to try to like grab on somebody's coattails and kind of ride this thing. So, that was something that was kind of an idea that was kind of placed in the back of my mind. And then, um, and then fast forward to around 2003, um, I was having a conversation with someone and they were like, um, they were super into, you know, Zodiac and Chinese Zodiac and uh, horoscopes and things like that. And so they asked me what my Chinese um, Zodiac uh, creature was right. and I had no idea. 
And so they were like, well, what's your birthday? And so I told my birthday, and it turns out that I was a pig, I, uh, that I'm a pig. Wait, is that, is very that's deep. February, isn't it? That's right. Uh, April for me. Oh. April, April. Okay, I thought I was a pig as well, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm February. It might. I, it, well, I think it comes down to the year. But, it's a, yeah, oh, it's you're a, right, it's it the does. year of the... Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, you might have just made it into... Um, I think I am the year of the pig as well. <laughs> yeah. So... So she's so they told me that and I was like um, I was like okay that's cool you know that's kind of neat but then the follow up conversation was well what kind of pig are you and I was like well what do you mean about that and apparently there's an elemental part to oh. it you know and so it turned out that I was a metal pig and I was like oh well what are the other things and they're like oh yeah there's like fire and water and metal and I was thinking whoa like fire pig like water monkey like that's starting to actually starting to sound cool now like <laughs> before i was like okay pig whatever but once you start adding these elemental aspects to it and then the gamer the I'm gamer a, i'm a gold just, pig by the way i just looked it up gold pig yeah gold pig there you well, go now i need to i need to know mine too so i'm <laughs> okay. gonna i'll, I'll um, wait so so the gamer part in me just kind of the little light bulb went off and go, wow, that's kind of neat. I wonder if anyone's ever done a game with using this kind of, you know, framework or this kind of reference material. And it turns out nobody had. And I looked high and low and up and down and uh, did all the searches I could and couldn't find any games on it. I couldn't even find any real pop culture, like good right. pop culture attempts at like tapping into this. So. I kind of filed that in the back of my mind. And then the third thing that kind of made this thing pop at all, and I'm sorry if this is going on a little longer than it no, should. No, no, it's your Great. game. I love the excitement. <laughs> but um, when I play games, I just naturally try to deconstruct them. And I naturally, if, I'm, if there's something I don't like about it, I just naturally try to figure out what could be changed about it to make it a little bit more appealing, at least to me. And I remember I was, um, I was looking at this game that was a... Um, it wasn't very good. It was it was pretty boring. It was it was a game where you reached in a bag and you pulled out these glass beads and then you put the glass beads oh, yeah. on this mat and um, and I don't remember the name of the game, but um, I just remember thinking, man, this could be a lot more engaging than what it than what <laughs> I was doing with this. And so I initially jumped into thinking, well, what if instead of just plain glass beads, you put something in the glass bead like you know how sometimes there's little scorpions that are trapped in resin you know and i was thinking, yeah i was thinking well you know maybe scorpion might be one you know maybe you could have like a little plastic animal like a rabbit mm -hmm. and maybe if you pulled out one of those and you place that down maybe the fact that the, that gym or or glass bead had that in there would imbue upon that glass bead some kind of special power like maybe if the rabbit one it could hop or something and so anyway i was playing around with that idea um, trying to make that a little bit better. And then it hit me for whatever reason, you know, what if you took the beat away and you put a tile down to instead? And um, and then as soon as I started thinking about that and thinking about, oh, creatures, putting a tile down, then it kind of came back to me about, oh, well, what if I put like a snake and I started to use, hmm. use the tiny zodiac to kind of put this um, game together. And once that hit, then everything just started coming together, like, like just, like I don't know. It was just kind of like the the floodgates had opened, and so um, that's kind of how it was, kind of born, if you will. That's that is that's awesome. I love I love the history of of how games came into being, and 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 just hearing that how how it started <clears throat> versus where it yeah. is now where the it's, it's so where great. the spark was yeah where the spark was that brought that to life. It's it's always fun to sort of hear where that. You know where that originated from. Um, the game itself—it's a two-player game with the star set. But is it scalable? Can you play, um, you know, four, six, depending on the number of sets that you you bring in? Absolutely. And this is another um, epiphany that happened. So when I was playing with the tiles, um, it turns out that the game plays extraordinarily well with um, one player on this side and the other player on that side. And when they play tiles into the playing area, they just place them facing them so I can tell what my tiles are okay. and my opponent can tell what tiles they are. But it turns out that that works just as elegantly with a third um, player and a fourth player. So they can play as well just on different sides and everybody can be playing tiles but since they're all facing them 
it's very, very elegant in terms of me being, or anybody being able to know whose tile is what. And okay. so it plays uh, two to four, very good. The, the max okay. is four because there's four sides to the, to the tiles, yeah, right? Sure. right. Yeah. Now, uh, it is listed as a starter set, uh, starter yep. set one, which is for two players. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. is there, are there plans for more starter sets and, and will there be differences? What, what right. can we expect from further uh, sets? Yeah. So what we're doing now with starter set one is, um, shocker. I'm not like a, a big board gaming conglomerate. So, you know, <laughs> uh, studios is a, is a pretty small little, um, little organization so far. And so what we wanted to do is if we thought it was important. The game has play tested so well at conventions, and I could tell you stories about kids coming to the booth and just staying for hours. Wow. In fact, the la one of the last conventions I was at was up in Redding, California, and an 11-year-old um, kid, he was coming by the booth, but he was a little shy, and he didn't really know if he wanted to engage, but then he sat down and started playing it, and he just kept playing and playing and playing, and, um, and that, hasn't, that wasn't the first time that had happened. Um, but what was interesting on this time is the next day at the con, I saw him come back and he had his parents with him. And the dad came up to me and he said, what is this thing? He's like, my son wouldn't stop talking about it all night long. And so um, so it's been getting response like that. So it's a very, you know, um, a very good thing. But to get back to why Starter Set 1. So since we're not a super big company, we kind of have to pick our battles. And what I thought was important was to get something out there that would um, act as an introduction to the game. And so that's what Starter Set 1 basically is. So as um, there's 12 creatures in the Chinese Zodiac, for those who might not know. And in the Starter Set 1, there are two pre-constructed decks. Um, one of them, which and those two decks cons consist of six of the 12 creatures of the Chinese Zodiac. So, okay. the, fir so the first deck will be um, a, a pre-constructed tiger, um, horse, dog deck, so that'll be one. And then the other one in the starter set is uh, pig, ram, and rabbit. And so those are the two decks that you get in this starter set one. And then when starter set two comes out, which is in pre-production right now, we're still finishing up the art and whatnot, uh, that'll come out in March. And that'll have the, the other six. So it'll have a dragon, snake, and rooster. And it'll have monkey, ox, and rat. And so those will be the two pre-constructed decks there. And so you don't have to buy, um, you don't have to buy Starter Set 1 to completely have fun and have a very good and engaging experience with Start With. You don't have to buy Starter Set 2 in order to have a really um, robust and fun experience with Starter Set 1. Uh, the reason I chose the decks that went into Starter Set 1 is because those were, are what I consider fan favorites. Okay. So when we go to cons, when I'm looking around, I'm bringing a lot of decks. Um, the ones that people are smiling the most while they're playing, the ones that people are laughing with, those are the ones that I was like, you know what, let's, let's take these and let's, let's get this out on the market and let's see how, you know. How is the Dragon not a fan favorite? Come on. Yeah, I, mean, the, I know I'm Dragon. I know um, that's. I know that's. I'm year that's, the dragon. I know that much. I just don't know which type of dragon. Well, I can tell you that dragon is one of the fan favorites from a, from just like a, a creature standpoint. But when people are interacting, there's just like a lot of silly things that pigs can do, and there's like a lot of <laughs> silly bad. things that like um, they can that horses can do and stuff like that. So um, it's not that those were. It's not that those are bad. It's not that they're not as good. But um, the Whenever I'm looking around and seeing like the most joy coming from people, it tended to be from like one of playing one of these two. So I thought, you know what, let's leave with that. And so that's kind of what's going on. And then, you know, um, in the future, I uh, so there are 196 tiles that I have designed for the game. Wow. Starter set one, starter set one consists of 34 unique tiles, but there's multiples of them. And then uh, starter set two consists of 40 more. And then, so that leaves about 120, and I'll probably release those in like two sets of 60, you know, like in a, like maybe in like a booster pack scenario. But um, it would it'll never be the case where um, you know certain companies are really jamming that stuff down people's throats. Like every single month, you know, a new thing is coming out that you have to buy in order to enjoy the game, or you're going to feel left behind. That's not the case with this. You could easily buy Starter Set One. 
set it down, play it as a board game, put it away, and then, you know, anytime later, you know, bring it out and play right. it again. And you wouldn't feel um, slighted. You wouldn't feel like you weren't having a, a, a really great experience. So that's kind of the strategy of how, as opposed to, you know what, I'm going to somehow cobble together that maybe hundred plus thousand dollars that it's going to sure. take to like do the art for 196 different tiles and then, you know, do this massive print run and just sit there and pray that someone likes it. Right. right? That's, that, I didn't feel that that was quite right for, for me and for what we're trying to do here. Now, Zutile's Hime, um, Hime is actually Japanese for princess. Yep. Um, is Hime simply the title of starter set one, or is the whole game called Zutile's Hime? Is, so, it, is it Zutile's, that's the game, and Hime is the set? How yeah, I mean, that's the way you can think about it. So Zutile's is the name of the game. Okay. He may, you can kind of consider it as the art style of this version of the game. Oh. So, um, and that kind of has an interesting story too. So I started, uh, I might have mentioned it before, but I started designing this game back in 2003, actually. It's so been a long road. <laughs> it's been a while. And when I first started designing it, I actually went around and got um, different artists, got 19 different artists to create a, um, to create the 196 different um, pieces of art for the game. And those pieces were with the game um, for up until 2019. And what happened was I ran into um, an acquaintance of mine who runs a small um, manga publishing house and um, called Golden Plume Comics. And I was showing him the game and he was, um, he was enthralled by the game. He was like, wow, this looks really, really fun. But he comes from a different, I guess, um, vantage point in terms of like what he likes aesthetically okay. and so he offered to do a complete um, to commission a whole new set of contemporary art um, based on like the anime style if you will and so um, you can't really turn down an awesome offer like that no. so basically <laughs> yeah so basically he went out and commissioned all the art that you see the, the art that you see behind me you know, the art that you see on the packaging, that's all courtesy of them. And um, we felt that that was a more contemporary style. But what I did is I did attend Gamma earlier this year, right before the COVID shut everything down. We were able to squeeze in um, Gamma. And um, I basically was talking to retailers and I showed them both. And I was like, so this is the original, this is the original like, you know, 17 year old art for the game, which, which is more, cla which would be more considered you know, classic American, if you will, like there, there aren't, um, they aren't like creatures, they aren't people, they aren't like, um, oh, I see. You know, there, it, it, and a dog, it would be an actual dog or, you know, uh, a tiger would be an actual tiger. And so, um, but I laid that out and I, and I love the old classic stuff. Don't get me wrong. But, um, when I was showing it to retailers, the universal, um, response, almost universal, I'd say about 98, 97% was that, we love the classic art. It's very charming. It's it's really great. But we can sell a hundred times more. And that's a quote. That's what they. That's a quote yeah. that they told me. Oh, like, wow. we go with this this newer, you know, anime version. We can sell that a hundred times more. So again, not being the biggest company in the world, we got to kind of pick where we think we're gonna win. You know, the best odds of winning. And so we we you know doubled down and kind of went down that Hime route. So the game is Zoo Tiles. The Hime references the art style for this version of the game. Now, what I might do is, and what I would hope that I want to do, is maybe do a Kickstarter version or do something for the old classic art, and that would be called Zoo Tiles Classic. Ah, and so, okay. um, so you'd have different versions, and people could mix and match because it's really just an art swap. So the tiles are all named the same. You know, all the... Um, all the stats are the same, what the tiles do are the same. It would just be a choice between if somebody, you know, really liked the anime style or if they liked the more traditional, um, you know, right. illustrated dogs and tigers and whatnot. So, so, again, that's another really long answer to your question, and yeah. I'm sorry about that. No, no, no problem. So uh, eventually, we're you know, once this takes off and it's hugely popular, we're going to end up seeing you know the the Batman and the the Marvel Avengers versions and every every everything under the sun is we're going to see a different zoo tiles for. Well, you know, that's a funny thing that you should mention because back in two thousand five, 
um, I was at San Diego Comic Con showing this game off, and we had a representative from Warner Brothers come by, and he was like, "What is this thing?" Wow. And so um, he had given. Well, I shouldn't say given. When you work with licensors like that, it's not really a gift. It's like we're going <laughs> to give you the opportunity of a yes. lifetime to yeah. license to pay us, you know, a hundred thousand dollars up front right. to use, uh, you know, the Justice League. And you also, oh, by the way, you also have to, you know, agree to all these guarantees, you know, that, um, you know, minimums and whatnot. And so, um, to make a long story short, it was tempting. The offer was there. And I just wasn't in a position to, it didn't feel like that was something that I wanted to do. But, um, but to your point, in the future, there could be, um, there, there could be, and I hope that there will be uh, different games out. I don't imagine that they would be under uh, the same rule set, you know, because I think that the superhero thing would probably need to be constructed a little bit different than how um, the, the, yeah. the Zodiac is handled. But definitely... Um, there's potential there, and I'm hoping to see that someday. That's awesome. Oh, that's, right. That would be amazing. <laughs> so um, where where will um, board gamers be able to pick this up? So you launching in October? Um, and where, where can they find this? Is this going to be in retail? Is this? Yeah, so we um, were really, really fortunate. Um, and yeah, I'm almost about to jump into another long story. That I, but I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to dial this back. But... Um, we were very fortunate to um, be able to partner closely with a Game Castle online. They're kind of, I don't know if you're familiar with Game Castle, they're more of like a West Coast, but they're in multiple states and a golden distribution. So uh, if anybody who's interested in checking it out, um, they can find the game ready for pre-order right now at, um, at um, Game Castle online. Uh, they can go to www.zuhime.com and um, they could find it there at a pre-order price, which is 20% off of MSRP. So, and once the game launches, then it's no longer pre-order, right? So then it's going to go yeah. back to school. So for anybody who thinks they might be interested, I would say this is a great time to grab that at a discount. I think it's twenty three ninety six for 84 tiles, high quality tiles, nice. you know, two millimeter thick tiles. Um, and then there's another place we're working with uh, Foundry Game Room or Wizardry Foundry, uh, people might know them. We're doing a deal with them where if you, you can also get the game and two packs of sleeves, two packs of 50 oh. count sleeves. Oh, and cool. You get that for the normal price of the game, which is $29.95. So I would say if you're a value buyer and want the sleeves, definitely go to the, Wizard, the Foundry Game Room. But if you just want the game at the lowest price, um, check out Game Castle online. And both of those deals end as soon as the game launches. So um, okay. might we check that out. Well, soon. we were going to have a link to Game Castle in the description below. So awesome. obviously, you know, click that link and go buy the game. Uh, Zoom Please. Tiles Hime out in October. Josh, yep. it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show to tell us about your, your game. I, I It sounds amazing. I love it. Thanks so Thank much. You. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the time. I really do. Welcome back again. Blah, let me start that again. <laughs> it's not always a smooth ride. 